Joining me today, we have an award-winning pharmacist who has also been featured in Forbes magazine. Please put your hands together and help me welcome Dr. Lornika Joseph. I am doing amazing. You look amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, women of color, we try. No, baby, we do it. Yes. <laughs> we do it, y'all. We do it. So, Dr. Wernika, we want to talk about your academic journey. My goodness, from the Bahamas all yes. the way to the U.S. Yes. Take us back to your childhood. <laughs> So literally, um, from my new myself, honestly, Sassandra, I always had a love for communication and curiosity. Mm -hmm. And so really going back to um, my mother and, you know, her really taking an interest in that. So the biggest thing in the Caribbean was go to school, get good grades, graduate and get a good job. And that's life. Mm -hmm. But my mother took things a step further. And so for me, I started journaling and really writing and sharing my thoughts. And so before there was things like therapy and coaching, I really learned the power of detoxing and emotional intelligence literally as a little girl. Wow. That's yes. That's powerful. Yes. That's and wonderful. so um, my mother passed away at the age of 17. And so that's where wellness, health and wellness came mm -hmm. um, really into the picture. And I wanted to know a little bit more and so when she passed away honestly I tell people my mother's death led me to Christ and so that was literally my mm -hmm. journey into becoming this pharmacist and wanting to really take what happened to her and allow the Lord to change it to happen for my community yes, yes. yeah so that's, that's really how it all now. started and Went to the illustrious Florida a &M University. Yes, FAMU, <laughs> HBCU. HBCU in the house, HBCU, yes. yes. And so I graduated with my, my um, doctorate in pharmacy degree, and I minored in journalism and communication, and here I am today. When I tell you if that ain't some black girl magic, <laughs> that is amazing. We Thank love you. it. I love this right here. Yes, you better yes. remind us. So you are a certified HIV AIDS tester and counselor. Yes, ma'am. How did this come about? Because we are going to dive deeply into sexually transmitted diseases, mm -hmm. STDs. You know, whether you're in high school or you're married, grown, right. whatever, this is something that affects you or that is a part of our lives. Yes, absolutely. So I know um, with the current climate, we're dealing with things like COVID and things like that, but people are still having sex. As you mentioned earlier, grown, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in your 60s or, third, you know, teenager, everyone, that is a part of, it's a normal feeling. We all desire to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And sexual intimacy is how we express ourselves. But it is very important, I think, at least twice a year, if you're sexually active or not practicing abstinence, you definitely want to make sure that you're getting tested. Because most STDs, you cannot, they're what we call in the medical field, asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. So you won't know. So I can't look at Sandra, I can't look at George and say, George is not infected. You only will know that by getting a test. And here's the last part that's important, getting your results. Getting your results, not going and just getting no, the no, test no, 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 and no, no, not no. finding you out know, what put, it posting is. Posting it on Instagram, hey, I got my HIV. No, post that status. Did you go back? for your status, yes. and that is where the true empowerment and the healing takes place. Now, I will tell you what, now, I, I am a single mom, mm -hmm. I have three children, and when it came down to testing and all of that stuff, yes. I was the drill sergeant. Really? Yes, yes, I started my kids very young um, because I found out about AIDS and all of that. <clears throat> I was touring and it was just shocking to me that there was a, de a disease out that you couldn't look at people right. and see. Everyone looked fantastic, yes. but then they were sick on the inside. And it was like, how do you know? What precautions do you take? Right. So the best way for me to teach my kids was to take them to the doctor and allow them to get tested. I love but how that. do you know the difference between an STD and an STI? So most STIs, mm -hmm. you will have some, some symptoms, for example, like chlamydia, or gonorrhea, you'll mm. see a physical change in your reproductive system and mm. your areas. Whereas with an STI, you won't know unless you actually go to the doctor and there's a, your blood is actually tested. Oh my goodness. So that is a difference. So people are still getting infected with syphilis. Gonorrhea is still out here. I know. 
gonorrhea is still out here. Mm. Chlamydia is still clapping back at people. Stop it. Right? So, you know what? And this is so funny. We say acronyms, but I want you to tell us what the acronyms mean. The STD. So STD stands for sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. And STI stands for sexually transmitted infection. Oh, so what difference. does that mean that someone already has the infection in their body? Yes, it's already in your blood. So that particular virus or bacteria is in your bloodstream. So it cannot be treated unless you either take some form of medication, whether that's in an injectable form or some medication, but that's taking, you have to go a step further by actually going to your medical provider to get that infection or disease treated. Yes, so you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself, keeping yes. up with your health. Now, why is it that women are, or they're supposedly diagnosed with more STIs because of uh, biological factors? Is that true? So what I will say, Sassandra, is of course, on top with, with wellness, most of the conditions and diseases that we encounter, especially black women, they're stress induced. Mm. So when you think about it, when we think of stress, we're thinking, okay, it's your, it's a heart disease or high cholesterol, but stress literally is a, the main culprit for a lot of infections. Because let's say, for example, a urinary tract infections, those are stress induced. And so the reason why women, it's, uh, it's more prevalent in women because we assume that, okay, something minor, it's like a cold, but it's not. And so month to month, on top of all of the things that we're doing as superwomen, we're taking care of our parents, we're taking care of our lovers, our children, we miss these, uh, these infections and these symptoms and they go away. So we believe, but guess what? They're still there and now they've progressed into other complications. Yes, yes. Yes. So do you think it's good for married couples to get tested? I absolutely do. I do believe so. Does that open the door of questioning uh, infidelity? It does, Sassandra. And to be honest with you, I think in the time that we're living in, it's not a matter of... It's not a crazy question. Right. <laughs> It's not a crazy question. And as a wellness coach, I tell my clients, the only way we're really going to heal is to have those conversations and not be afraid. So it's not saying that, you know, I don't trust you as to why I'm asking you to get a test. What I am saying is I want us to dialogue. Let me know. Like if there is infidelity, I won't know unless you open up and tell me. So I don't think it's, it's in, the, in this day and era that we should be afraid of asking for a test every now and again, even, even as a married, married couple. Yep. Wow. I yeah. have one last question for you. Okay. When you find out or if you've had sex with someone and mm -hmm. then you find out that you have tested positive for something, how important is it for you to share that with them? How important is it <laughs> for you to share that with them? <laughs> I just want you to tell us, doctor. <laughs> Stress sharing and literally like not only from a perspective of a test, but everything. I believe, I tell people all the time, even when I'm coaching and speaking on stages, sex is for grown folks. So if you That's are- That's what my mama used to say. <laughs> It's for grown folks. So mm. if we're sexually, to, you know, we're intimate, we're partners. And if you feel fearful or you're not, we're not vulnerable enough for you to tell me to be honest. Well, hey, you know, Dr. Lorniko, or, hey, you know, um, I slept, you know, there was infidelity and I think I may be positive. Then that speaks to whether you love me, because if you love me, you'll share the truth, whether I accept it or reject it.